I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Some people have noticed that the antennas on some FreeSky receivers are shorter than it seems like they ought to be. They're not the right length. And if an antenna is not the right length, then it's not tuned to the right frequency, and that means you're going to get much worse range. But I'm not convinced that that's actually true. Yes, the antennas are shorter, but I'm not convinced that the range is actually going to be worse. I'm going to tell you why that's so, and then I'm going to do a test, and we'll see if it's really true. In a minute, we're going to go out into the field, and we'll take a look at my test setup, my test procedure, and yeah, of course, the test results. But before we do that, let's talk for a minute about why people think these antennas are the wrong length and, and what is exactly the right length for an antenna. And to know what the right length of an antenna is, we have to know what the wavelength of the signal that the antenna is intended to receive is. If you know what the wavelength of the signal is, the length of the element, the active element of the antenna, will correspond to the wavelength. And the reasons for that go a little bit deeper than we're going to go. But let's say you've got a signal and the wavelength of the signal is 12, uh, 12 centimeters. Well, the length of your antenna's element would need to be 12 centimeters and it would be optimally tuned to that frequency. So in the case of the little whisker antennas that we've got on our receivers, the, the length of the element is this that little piece of coax, little wire sticking out at the end of the coax. If we were to look at something like a cloverleaf antenna like we use for, uh, for, for FPV video, the elements are those little, you know, round cloverleaf parts. In any case, the size is tuned to the wavelength. Now, it turns out that the best reception is with an antenna element equal to one wavelength. And if you're really deep into this topic, you know that that's even not always true, but let's not go that deep either. But a, a, an antenna of length one wavelength can sometimes be too big. It's bigger than you really need it to be. And it turns out you can get decent reception if you go to like a half a wavelength or a quarter wavelength or an eighth of a, some for some fraction of a wavelength and half wavelength or quarter wavelength are very typical fractions and they don't work as well as a whole wavelength but they work good enough and 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 the smaller size is oftentimes worth it but there are other fractions like not quite a quarter wavelength that just don't really work very well at all and that's what's got some people worked up so the antennas that we're working with are ex uh, expected to be a quarter wavelength. Nobody expects you to use a half or a full wavelength. It's just too long. And a quarter wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz is about 31 millimeters. And I say about 31 millimeters because we talk about these as being 2.4 gigahertz transmitters, but the actual frequency band is between 2.4 and 2.4835 uh, gigahertz. So you might tune the antenna to the center of that frequency band instead of to the bottom, right? We might not tune the antenna to 2.400 gigahertz. Um, so the actual length of the antenna, maybe it would be down around 30 millimeters or whatever. That would be a quarter wavelength antenna. But some of the antennas that we're seeing are they're way outside the range of what we would normally expect. 28 millimeters, some cases even shorter than that. And it's led people to wonder, is FreeSky using like a one-fifth wave antenna, which that would potentially cause a lot worse reception. But the question is not as cut and dried as people make it out to be. And there are two reasons for that. One reason is that the actual optimal tuning of the antenna depends not only on the, the wire itself, but also the circuitry inside the receiver. The receiver can have circuitry that changes the tuning of the antenna and the, the receiver itself to the point where the antenna will appear to be tuned a certain frequency, but in fact, it's another frequency. Now, there's no way for me to know what FreeSky is doing inside their radio modules to tune the impedance and so forth. So we just have to acknowledge that it's a possibility that with the right circuitry, well, practically any antenna length could turn out to be optimal. And we have to acknowledge that maybe FreeSky knows something we don't know about the circuitry inside these receivers. That means that the antenna length that we naively expect is not correct. We just can't know about that. Well, there's some tests we could do. But the other thing that I think is more sort of obvious, easier to test, and interesting is that the optimal length of the antenna or the wavelength of the antenna depends not just on the frequency but also on the propagation speed of the signal. And here's a simple analogy for, for how to think about that. Imagine that you've got a train car, like a flatbed car, and, and you're going to start bouncing a ball right? And the ball is bouncing up and down. And then the train begins moving forward so that as the ball bounces, 
know that it moves forward, okay? And you can see that the frequency is the, the periodicity at which the ball is bouncing, right? That's the frequency. And the wavelength, how far the ball moves on each bounce, that's going to depend on the speed of the train. So if the train is moving really slowly, the ball may not go very far on each bounce. And if the train is moving really quickly, the ball may go really far, even though the frequency, the, the periodicity at which the ball is bouncing has stayed the same. So the wavelength of a signal depends on its speed. But these are electromagnetic signals, so don't they go at the speed of light? Well, the speed of light, yeah, they, by definition, they move at the speed of light. But the speed of light is not the same in every medium. The, the number that we think of as being the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second, is the speed, 299,000 and change. Let's just round. 300,000 kilometers per second is the speed of light in a vacuum. And as light moves into other mediums, as it moves through other materials, like the atmosphere of the Earth or, or any object that a radio wave might move through, or more fundamentally, inside a coaxial cable or an antenna, its speed does change. And in fact, for coaxial cable, there's a, there's a, a, a it's called the velocity factor. And you can actually look, you can look in a table or a spec chart for a given coax cable, what the velocity factor is. And the velocity factor depends on many different things. It's not just as simple as the, the thinner coax has a slower or a faster velocity factor. It depends on the impedance and all these other things, doesn't matter. But it could be anywhere from maybe 60 to 85% of the speed of light, depending on the type of coax. And so you can immediately see that depending on the velocity factor of the coax, the wavelength, that the, the actual physical length that corresponds to a one quarter wavelength antenna could change dramatically. So the only way to know for sure is to test, to test and see how the range applies. And I'm gonna show you some of that testing. Let's take a look. So here's a little rig that I built with my receivers attached up to it. And the receivers that we've got in this lineup are the RXSR, that's the newest and tiniest receiver from FreeSky. And man, it is tinier than I even thought it was. This is the first one I've actually had in hand. And the venerable X4RSB. And we've got an XM Plus here. And I actually have two XM Pluses in this roundup. Uh, this one has aftermarket antennas. I chopped the antennas on it once and I replaced them with some aftermarket antennas ordered off of Banggood. Here is an XSR. And this is a stock factory X4RSB, or XM Plus rather. Oh, no, I got it backwards. This is the, well, anyway, one of these is stock factory and one has aftermarket antennas on it. That's what's in the roundup. And we've got these guys mounted on this pole here and I've marked off 100 feet there in five foot increments. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my transmitter in a range check mode and I'm gonna just walk away uh, and I'm gonna test each of these transmitters to find out how much range I get, and I'm going to graph how the signal strength drops off over time. And we'll get right to those results after a very brief word from our sponsor, which is, it's you. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, nobody sponsors these results. Nobody pays for my time and effort to do these testing. I just love doing tests like this because I love figuring out answers to questions and then sharing the answers with you. And if you've watched eight or nine minutes of me blathering on about Velocity Factor, then I know you love it too. So if you're not already one of my supporters over at patreon.com, let me take a very brief moment to tell you, I have a Patreon. You can support me even just a little bit a month adds up. And uh, the link is down in the video description and on screen right now. If you're not already a subscriber and you enjoy this content, give it a thought. Okay, now on with the video. And here are the results. This table shows the RSSI as reported by the Tyrannus when in range check mode, starting at five foot away from the receiver and going out to 120 feet. I should mention that this is a unitless number. It's not dB or dBm. It's just, I don't know what it is, but it starts up around 85 or 90. As you get further and further away from the radio, it gets lower and lower. And then somewhere in the low 40s is where you start getting RSSI critical, RSSI low readings. You, you may notice, by the way, I didn't actually get down to the low 40s. I got 120 feet away from the freaking uh, receivers, and I still, even in range check mode, was not getting errors or warnings. And yes, I'm 100% sure I was in range check mode. I don't know. The Tyrannus consistently gave much longer range in range check mode than I normally expect. I normally expect to walk 30, maybe 100 feet away and start getting dropped. But I don't know what the deal was, but it is, is what it is. 
looking at the results, I'm not sure there's a clear conclusion to draw, to tell you the truth. We can see that the gray line is pretty consistently lower than the orange line. And the gray line is the X4R SB, and it has the, the antenna that most of us would use as the standard. It's 33.25 millimeters long, which is actually 27%. It's not quite exactly a quarter wavelength, but that's what most of us were used to when we started seeing antennas like the XSR and the XM Plus with shorter antennas and going, hey, what's going on here? And it actually did the worst in the testing. I, why? I don't know. Um, it did, however, beat the RXSR. To say it did the worst in the testing is not really telling the whole story because the RXSR's RSSI was all over the place. It actually kind of makes me wonder if I have a defective unit because you'll see later in the testing, I swapped antennas for the RXSR and it was still kind of all over the place. Whereas the X4R SB, if you compare its line, you can see it's lower. I kind of was averaging the RXSR but actually, if I was taking multiple measurements and showing them to you, you'd see that the X4R SB is a much more solid link than the average of the RXSR, which was kind of all over the place. And then the XSR kind of did the best. It's, it's sort of in the middle when you get out past 60 feet, but it's at the top when you're up close, and it's, it's reasonably at the top even when you get further out. And that's interesting because the XSR's antennas are pretty close to exactly one-fifth wavelength, at least the speed of light in a vacuum, they're one-fifth wavelength. And so most of us would say, oh, well, those antennas are clearly wrong, but it, it's definitely not the case as we look at these results. Frankly, as we look at these results, I think that it, we can't conclude that any one of these is doing categorically worse than any of the others. And so the hypothesis, I think, that is, is still sort of up in the air. Okay, here's what we're going to do next. I cannot do a walk-off of the RSSI for the XM Plus receivers because the XM Plus receivers don't support telemetry. Since they don't support telemetry, I can't get an RSSI readout. So instead, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that they don't support telemetry. Since they don't support telemetry, you can bind as many of them as you want to the same model and have them active at the same time. If you try to do that with telemetry receivers, the telemetry will fight with each other. The, the receivers are trying to transmit telemetry back to the Tyrannus, and they transmit at the same time. They, they corrupt each other's transmissions, and the Tyrannus says telemetry lost, and you get a dropout. But if you have one telemetry receiver, you can have as many non-telemetry receivers as you want active at the same time, and they won't interfere because they're all just receiving the signal from the Tyrannus. They're not transmitting back. And at this point, I'm going to spare you the pain of watching that whole test because it didn't go very well. Uh, but I want you to know if you notice that today is a different day and the setup is a little different, it's because I spent probably an hour walking around trying to get good results and failing. And at the end, when I went and tried to edit it together, I was just like, this makes no freaking sense. So we're going to take another stab at it, and let me show you the setup that we're going to be doing. It's very similar to the last setup, but also a little different. I'm going to be using three receivers in this test, and the antennas that I'm going to be using are the 23.47 millimeter antenna, which is one of the shortest ones that I've got. The RXSR is going to have the 33 millimeter antennas that were originally on the X4R SB. These antennas are the closest to an actual quarter wavelength uh, that of any of the ones in the test and the RXSR is the newest sort of coolest hottest receiver So let's see how that works. Now. These are not the antennas that came with the RXSR Those are these 23.47 millimeter antennas and maybe we'll do another test where we swap that around uh, But for now, this is what we're going to do and then finally we've got another RXSR or sorry We've got another XM plus over here and this has 32.24 millimeter antennas Again, these are very close to a quarter wavelength. These are aftermarket antennas, I believe, that I like ordered from Banggood to replace some that broke. Um, and we'll see how these do. So there is our radio. And it's a little bit higher up off the ground in this test, but I think, which I think is going to make the results a little more repeatable, a little more accurate. Um, being really close to the ground affects the reception pattern of the antenna. Um... <coughs> Alex Grieve tells me that is the way a monopole works. I don't know what that is, but okay. Now you're you're probably not going to be able to see the little LEDs on these receivers. In fact, I can barely see them. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. 
found a dog toy. Ha! I'm astounded at how far I get, even in range check mode, on these guys. You're supposed to be able to walk 20, 30 paces away, but we're getting so bloody far. Still green. All of them are rock solid green. And I'm so far away, I kind of can't even believe I'm in range check mode. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tilt this forward. The weakest part of the antenna's reception is directly off the end of the tip. So if I tilt it forward, it should make them weaker. Still nothing. I can't believe we've gotten this far away in range check mode and still aren't getting any dropout. That's, I mean, I'm definitely in range check mode. What is even happening? I'm gonna now walk to where there's some obstructions, but at this point, it's a little tricky because you can start blaming the drops on like a bounce or something and say, oh, well, you're not going straight across a field. It's not a fair test. I just don't know what to do at this point though. Okay, there. We just had this guy go red again. RXSR is also red. So the 23 and the 32 millimeter antenna are, and the 32.24 millimeter or 0.74 millimeter antenna is hanging in there green, has not gone red yet on the RXSR. Now we're back to green, but blinking. The RXSR with the 33 millimeter antenna is coming and going. Let's see if this guy drops out. The other two are kind of coming and going. Hello, goats. Would you like to help with the testing? Okay, now, let's see if it comes back now that I've turned around. The 32.74 millimeter antenna RXSR is gone. Um, uh, both of the XM pluses are now gone with the 23 and the 32 millimeter antenna. The RXSR is now hanging in there with the 33 millimeter antenna. And if I move side to side, there, now the RXSR is gone too. Trying to sort of move this back and forth so we account for the fact that we've got obstructions which may be causing bounces, localized noise. All three, oh nope, this one's back. So this 32.74 millimeter antenna seems to be doing the best on this XM Plus. And the RXSR, yeah. Okay. And you start to see the challenge that I had the first time I did this testing. I'm sort of falling into the trap again of, of the challenge of getting any kind of methodical, meaningful results out of this testing. Um, because you want to be able to say this antenna did better or that receiver did worse. And the results are all kind of a mishmash. But I think what we can conclude is that no particular antenna length seems to be doing dramatically worse or dramatically better than the other. I don't see any pattern emerging. And the thing is, if, if uh, you know, people talk about the difference between these antennas as if there's a doubling of range, you know, you go to a quarter wavelength from whatever the stock was and your range doubles. And I think if there were such a big difference, then a pattern would have emerged. And the fact that I've now spent hours walking around my property, flipping antennas one to the other, there's a whole lot more testing that you're not seeing swapping antennas at no point have I gotten any kind of meaningful pattern to emerge to say this antenna is worth worse, this antenna is better. So, so I think we have to conclude that the simple explanation of, oh, it's a not a quarter wavelength, it must be bad, I don't think that, that, that evidence currently supports that. As always with science, more testing is needed. Um, it's, it's hard to come to a, a conclusion. All you can say at this point is that the evidence doesn't support this conclusion yet. 
we need more testing to further, you know, is one of these receivers better than the other? Is there a particular antenna that seems to go with a particular receiver? I don't think so because we've tested, I flipped these antennas around and just the results don't seem to change. It's also possible, it has to be acknowledged, it's also possible that any variance in the antennas is inside the margin of error of my testing. That my testing is only so, I'm not in an anechoic chamber, right? I'm in a real environment where the signal is bouncing around, moving unpredictably. And so, hey, you know what though? I mean, you know, as long as you understand the limits of the science, then, you know, incomplete science is better than none at all. Yeah. Um, again, though, the conclusion I'm going to come to is that these antennas, we've got these little tiny stubby 23 millimeters. We've got the longer 33 millimeters that are supposed to be closer to the actual quarter wavelength. There just doesn't seem to be a big difference, at least not that I can discern with the type of testing that I'm doing. And I would say if you have an antenna and you're seeing ridiculously short range and you change the antenna, there's something else about the antenna or the receiver that caused that not the fact that the antenna was or was not a quarter wavelength. There you go. Uh, I wish I could give you more. I wish I could give you a definitive, yes, in 100% of the cases, this receiver, this antenna, hard numbers, graphs, and, and sometimes science is messy, and that's just what we have to deal with. But that is going to do it for this video, because I got a whole lot of other stuff I need to be working on. I hope you like it. I hope it was valuable. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Has the antennas from the RXSR. Hello, goats. Hello. I have nothing for you. I have no corn. Sorry. Would you like to test some RF with me? Only sadness. Only disappointment.